has come to realize that one of the twelve would turn against him. And this causes concern, as we heard. So Peter motions to John, the beloved apostle, who's leaning against Jesus' side, ask Jesus who this might be. Jesus reveals his betrayer when he takes a morsel of the bread and dips it and hands it to Judas. He also confronts Judas by saying, go and do what you have to do. Judas leaves the meal, but no one really seems to understand what is going on. But Jesus also reveals another betrayer at the table. His conversation with Peter indicates that Peter will deny him, deny knowing him. Peter says, I will never do such a thing. But as we know, he too, like Judas, fell. One of the things that the Gospels really don't address uh, is how Jesus must have felt. Imagine what was going through his mind and his heart about two of his own chosen betraying him and denying him. Again, in his humanity, Jesus must have grieved over this betrayal. Being betrayed by people closest to you is one of the most hurtful things that a person can experience. Having someone you love turn against you is a deep and painful wound. And in most cases, forgiveness does not come easy from those who have been betrayed. For instance, in the case of marital infidelity, that act of betrayal can easily bring down a marriage. But it's important for us to remember as we go through these readings that these acts of betrayal by Judas and then Peter, and in fact by all the apostles who fled, these are not beyond forgiveness. They're not beyond redemption. Because Jesus came into the world as a result of betrayal. Our two parents, our first parents, betrayed their maker. Adam and Eve turned away from God. And that necessitates the coming of the Redeemer. In, it is Jesus' act of obedience, his refusal to betray God. That is what brings about his death. And God the Father looks upon his son's faithfulness as a remedy for our own acts of betrayal. So what Judas and Peter have done is really indicative of the reasons why Jesus went through his suffering and death. These events in the final weeks, in the final week of Jesus' life, remind us about how we, how we ourselves are guilty of betrayal. We betray the Lord through our various sins and selfishness and acts of disobedience. We betray other people by our failure to love. What's the consequence for people who betray? Well, punishment and even death. But thankfully, we can all be on the receiving end of forgiveness through the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ. Knowing that we have betrayed Christ by our sins, we should call out for his mercy and forgiveness. We're not to despair because of those betrayals, as did Judas, but we are to turn back to Christ, who desires that we be reconciled to him, as was Peter after the resurrection. So in these final days of Lent, it might be good for us to reflect on our own acts of betrayal, how we really are one with the disciples, aren't we, when it comes to our inability to remain consistent in a faithful relationship with God and neighbor. As we call these things to mind, we should be grateful that the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ offers us the opportunity to make things right.